think, with a great deal of anxiety and depression of the new conflict in the Middle East because I am afraid it's going to get worse and worse. The, uh, and it is, of course, several different things coming together. There are uh, parts of it that are religious conflict, and we are reminded that it's not just Islam versus Christianity or Judaism, it's Shia and Sunni, and even more specific groups um, within Islam. Uh, and therefore that the West was often not understanding very clearly what was going on. It is a question of states in which there are interests of Iran as a state, not Iran, for Shiism, not Iran for Islam, but Iran as a specific state, um, and others. There are the interests of stateless peoples, like the Kurds, who are trying to form a state. So one of the few winners in this situation is the Kurdish population, which may for the first time get a Kurdish state um, in uh, northern Iraq. The, um, it reminds us of the vulnerability of minority populations and the extent to which nation states sometimes have been the units of protecting minorities and achieving relative peace. So a very dominant part of our thinking about nation states is to remember genocides and say, oh, states have been terrible. They just try to promote the majority population and block everyone else. Well, intervening as the US did by the war in Iraq to destabilize a nation state may put minorities at risk also, and we should not only think that nation states are the, the source of genocide or other kinds of power structures and evils, they may be the stabilizations in situations where there are many different people trying to live in peace with each other. And I think the, uh, the war in Iraq uh, was an unmitigated disaster for the region. Maybe some people had good intentions, but it was a disaster and it set in motion an unfolding series of events which also have other causes, but which now leave us with a very hard situation to pacify and stabilize and an impossible situation in which to achieve justice. If we could just achieve peace, it would be a big step forward. Um, but there will be no justice for most of the refugees who have been forced to flee from their homes. Um, that's already lost. In my view, the, one of the first conditions for social science, and especially a critical social science, which I believe really is ultimately the only kind that is a real science, is to recognize that Tina is not true. That almost all the time there are alternatives some that are worse, some that are better. And that if we think that what actually exists is natural, necessary, inevitable, then we don't understand it. We also don't understand possible futures, but we don't even understand the current reality because to understand it, we have to understand why this particular set of conditions exists and not some others that were previously possible. And I think this is a, an insight of critical theory. It's an insight of structuralism. It's an insight of different perspectives. It's not the property of any one kind of social science, but it's a basic thing that we have to uh, recognize that what actually exists now is only part of what is possible. If we want to understand both the current reality and the future possibilities. Okay.